Hi everyone, happy Friday. I'm so glad to have you here for another live Friday. I am drinking my morning coffee out of my tort mug this morning. And I think I mentioned last time that I've been working on book 13, book 13 of the Bake Shop Mysteries, which is going to involve our favorite barista Andy competing in a barista challenge. So my drink is a toast to Andy this morning. And really it's an excuse lately just to have to drink copious amounts of coffee, which is not a bad thing in my opinion. <laughs> Um, okay, so before we get started, while we're waiting for people to come and join in on our stream, I want to share two things. Actually, I'll do a quick rundown of how our live is going to go today. I have a couple things to share with you. We're going to do a quick recap of this week's voting. I have new pages to read and then your assignment, of course. And at the end, I'll open it up for questions, questions about our collaboration or anything else you wanna ask me on this dreary Friday in Ashland. I don't have to worry today about um, the camera getting too hot because we had massive thunderstorms roll in last night and lightning and hail. I love a good storm, so I enjoyed it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna share is a quick little story and then I have a question for you. So I don't know if anyone is experiencing COVID dreams. Have you heard the stories about the crazy COVID dreams that we as like a collective people are experiencing? I am a big dreamer. And in fact, for many years, I used to keep dream journals when I was like, right when I would wake up, I would write down my dreams. And I haven't been faithful about it lately, but I have had some crazy COVID dreams. And my favorite one I wanted to share with you because my birthday was a few weeks ago and I had told some friends about this. So now I have a whole theme recurring around it. And it is this, my dream is that I decided that I was leaving my husband for a garden gnome. Yeah, yeah, you heard that right, a garden gnome. I had this whole long discussion with my husband about how sorry I was, but I had fallen in love with a gnome, a gnome as in like a garden gnome statue. And that, you know, after 20 plus years, it was over, I was leaving him for a gnome. So one of my good friends, this is sitting on, on my windowsill, so I thought I would share it with you this morning, made me a garden gnome from, oh, I gotta go this way, um, a garden gnome from uh, all Dollar Tree items. It's a nice little garden gnome sock. So it's sitting in my window as a nice reminder of my crazy COVID dreams. So my first question to you is, have you had any crazy COVID dreams too, or am I alone on this one? I know that I've read some articles about how, you know, it's our brain's way of processing everything that's been going on. So I'm super curious about that. All right, then secondly, my next question to you all before we get started on our pages is share something positive that has happened to you this past week. I know that we've been bombarded by so much negativity on all levels and I always wanna try to share joy through my writing or through this page. So. If you have something great or just mediocre or good that's happened, share it in the comments. I have something to share that's good. Genevieve says, sounds like my dreams every night. I know, that's true. I mean, I, I shouldn't necessarily blame the pandemic because I always have crazy dreams, um, but I do think it's funny that there's this idea of COVID. Susan says, I have COVID dreams every night. When I wake up, I think it's not true. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I think my husband's pretty worried about me actually leaving him for a gnome. There are a lot of gnomes in my garden now. I sense a theme. I don't actually even have, you know, I know people, uh, I have a dear friend actually who loves garden gnomes. Like I wouldn't say that I have a particular affinity towards them. It's nothing I've thought of before. <laughs> Diana, you had weird dreams too. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? When you don't remember them, but you wake up with that like weird fuzzy feeling. Yeah. Okay. So on to the good stuff, share something good that happened. I want to share what has happened to me. Susan, you were able to get books at the library. Oh, that is cause for celebration. Our libraries here in Southern Oregon just reopened too, but under, you know, pretty strict guidelines and everything, but it's super exciting to be able to get books again. Cheers to that. My good news for this week is that I just finished, look at that beauty, uh, book number five of the Sloan Krauss Mysteries. This book will come out sometime in 2021, but the way the publishing process works, which I know I've talked about this before, 
it takes a while. So right now I'm in the first stages of drafting this beauty and then I'll spend some months over the summer editing it. I'll deliver it later this fall and then it goes through the whole publishing process. But I always love the feeling of finishing a new book. It, there's always just this like tangible sense of completion even though I know there's so much work to be done. So that's my exciting news. Genevieve finally broke my writer's block. Yay, that's exciting. You know, I have to do a whole piece on this. In fact, I think at some point I shared my thoughts on writer's block, but I'm getting ready to do this whole series of classes and I, and I address writer's block, but I'm glad that you worked your way through it and that you're on your way to a first draft. Susan, I'm excited that you're excited for Sloan too. I love writing Sloan. Um, this particular book, I gotta drink my coffee. <laughs> this particular book, is, book number five, we're gonna wrap up her backstory. For those of you who haven't followed along with this series, Sloan has been searching for her birth parents for the last, well, three books that are out and five to come. So in five, we're going to wrap that up. Yes. Um, classes. Oh, okay. I'll talk about classes at the end. We'll come back to that because I'll, I'll give you a whole little spiel on what my class is going to be. But uh, I wanted to share the cover, if you haven't seen it, for book number four, Without a Brew. Isn't it the cutest? I love this one. It's the first time we get to see the interior of Nitro. So we're seeing the view looking out into the village in Leavenworth. And I'm just super in love with the cover. This book will come out October 1st. It is the fourth book in the Sloan Krauss Mysteries. And then book number three, which is Beyond a Reasonable Stout, is already out in hardcover, but it will come out at the end of September. So if you want to catch up on the series, especially now that libraries are open too, or you've been holding out for a paperback copy, you can get that at the end of September. Read it quickly because I know you're all voracious readers and you'll read something in two days, right? And then um, you'll be ready for book number four. Awesome. Okay. So any other good news to share this week before we move on to our recap? I'm so excited that you're all here with me. Hi. Hi, Rosie. Oh, that's so nice to hear. And hello from Canada. How's the weather your way? Our way is still cold and stormy. We've been in this weird pattern where it's hot and dry for a few days, and then we get these torrential rains and storms, but my garden is absolutely loving that. Okay, before we get started with this week's pages, I want to give you a quick recap on what you all voted on this week. So the first question had to do with Tony. We needed to know why did Tony break into the safe and steal the deed? This one was really close. In fact, it, I was going back and forth for days watching the votes on all of my channels. I wasn't sure which way it was gonna go, but you all finally decided that she was married to Peter and she planned to steal the Mary Windsor from Richard. That is brilliant. So that's question number one that's incorporated in this week's pages. Question number two is what was Hank's motive? This was another close one. You can see by the voting results, like it was a narrow margin. Um, you came up with what I was sort of secretly hoping for just because there's so much fodder in some sort of a revenge death. So Hank wanted to get revenge for the death of his mother, who Peter killed with poison a few years ago. So that's where we stand with our uh, questions from this week. I wrote the new pages. I'm super excited to share them with you. And I will have one last task for you once we are done with this week's pages. All right, are you ready? Here we go, without further ado, part 12 of our Big Shot Mystery spinoff, A Brunch with Death. The professor came into the kitchen and offered us a file folder. Go ahead and open it. I looked to Juliet. Her hands were loaded down with a tray of chocolate malted cupcakes. I took the file from the professor. Inside was a marriage certificate. I nearly dropped the paper on the floor when I read the names on the document. Tony was married to Peter? 
I couldn't contain my shock. Indeed, the professor nodded. Much has come to light. I am absolutely confident after your performance this morning, we will have Peter's killer in custody. Juliet set the tray of cupcakes on the counter and looked over my shoulder at the marriage certificate. Why did Tony kill Peter? Was she actually planning on going through with her engagement to Peter? I mean, to Richard? That'd be funny. <laughs> I snapped my fingers and interrupted her. That's it. Peter wouldn't grant her a divorce, so she had to get him out of the way. The professor chuckled. It's no wonder you two are such fast friends. He took the folder from me. That's not quite it. But as I said, all will be made clear soon. What did that mean? My theory couldn't possibly be wrong, could it? Can I get you a coffee, a pastry? Juliet asked. The professor declined. Alas, there's much to be done. I was hoping that you might be ready to accompany me to the Merry Windsor and set up for our morning escapades. Count me in, I raised one hand. I'm ready and eager. Juliet brushed flour from her hands. Me too. I just need to box up the cheddar and bacon scones, and then Brady can bring the cinnamon roll casserole over when it's done baking. She turned to Brady. It shouldn't take more than about 20 minutes. You might want to check it after 15 and make sure it's not browning too quickly. No problem, Brady gave her a thumbs up. Juliet went over a few more instructions with her staff before joining us. You're going to want a coat. It's nasty out there, I suggested, pointing to black raincoat hanging a rack near the basement door. Blow winds and crack your cheeks, the professor quoted Shakespeare as we stepped out into the monsoon. A fitting backdrop for what's to come, wouldn't you say? I noted, fighting to shut the door against the gusting wind. Juliet tucked her head under her raincoat as we hurried across the plaza to the Merry Windsor. Once inside, we shrugged off our wet layers and the professor directed us to the ballroom. I need to gather a few things together. Here are your scripts. Please review them and I shall return shortly. He gave us a bow and left us in the empty, cavernous room. Well, my leading lady, what do you say? Ready to get into character? Juliet grimaced, I guess. I still don't understand why he wants us to do this. But I know the professor always has a good reason. That, and no one can resist those cheekbones, darling. I tapped the side of her jaw. She rolled her eyes. Come on, let's do this. We proceeded to the stage where a single cot and a folding chair had been placed. I took a first pass at the script. I believe the cot is for you. Juliet, uh, Juliet assumed the role of invalid while I sat next to her. We spent a good 30 minutes running lines and making sure we understood where the most emphasis needed to go. After reading through the script, I was no clearer on who the killer could be. The professor returned as promised, followed by Richard, Tony, Hank, and Brady, who came bearing beautiful and aromatic pastries from Tort. Everyone, please have a seat, the professor said, pointing to a row of chairs in the front of the stage. Richard, I believe you mentioned that your staff will be providing coffee and tea to accompany Brady's brunch fare. Yeah, Richard's face was red and puffy. I wondered if he'd spent the evening crying in his pillow. He walked to the other side to, of the stage to place a call. While we wait for our coffee, I wanted to let you know that I asked you here for a special performance. Juliet and Lance have agreed to offer us an enlightening two-person show that I believe will be equally moving and informative. Richard returned to his seat, followed shortly by a waiter in a classic Mary Windsor uniform of pantaloons and a puffy white shirt. The waiter set up carafes of coffee, tea, cream, and sugar next to the platters of cheddar bacon scones, cinnamon roll French toast casserole, and a colorful fruit salad. Please help yourselves to brunch and then we'll start the performance. The professor encouraged everyone to fill up their plates. Once our small audience had reconvened with steaming mugs of coffee and breakfast nibbles, the professor dimmed the lights, our cue to begin. 
Juliet coughed <coughs> and clutched her chest. She tried to sit up but fell back onto the cot. Oh, I licked my fingers again. I can't not do it. And they're stuck. <laughs> it's part of the tension. Don't try to move. I'll bring the paperwork to you. I reached beneath my chair and picked up a piece of paper and pen. Are you sure I'm supposed to sign this? Juliet's voice was weak, as if it was a struggle to breathe. I was impressed with her talent. This will ensure your estate is settled exactly as you wanted. I placed the pen in her hand. But I already signed my last will and testament. Remember, we discussed this. I know you're confused. That document wasn't valid. This is what you wanted. I will make sure your final wishes for the estate will be directed exactly as this reads. Her fingers shook. I clasped my hand over hers and helped her sign the will. There, it's done. I set the paperwork on the floor and picked up a small paper cup. You look weary. Drink this. It will help you sleep. I propped up her head. She sipped the liquid. Within seconds, she began gasping for air, coughing violently, pounding her chest. I gave her an evil smile. Took the paperwork and exited the stage. Juliet collapsed onto the cot and took her final breath. Brady clapped twice. Richard scowled, and Tony looked confused. Hank leapt up from his chair and screamed, He did it! I knew he did it! He killed my mother! The professor stood. Yes, son, I'm afraid he did. Hank crumpled. He sobbed. Peter killed her! He killed my mother! He had to die! He had to! He didn't deserve to live, not another day, not another breath. The professor walked over to him and placed a hand on his shoulder. It's over now. I returned from stage left. Juliet caught my eye as the professor helped Hank to his feet and escorted him out of the ballroom. Well, I didn't see that coming. I offered Juliet my hand. Hank, who knew? What next? I addressed our gaping audience. I myself could use a bloody Mary. I stopped. Actually, make that a bloody Mary. You're welcome, Richard. Feel free to use that. Aha. Okay, that is part 12, part 12 of our collaboration, A Brunch with Death. I love how this is playing out. I hope you enjoyed that new section. And are you ready for your next assignment? We have one more assignment before our grand finale next week. And that is, dun, 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 what happens next? Okay, so this one is super open-ended, but as we talked about before, we're gonna, everything's gonna wrap up nicely in a pretty little bow next week. So I want you to think about any and all possibilities of what might happen next. Do Tony and Richard reconcile? Do they get with the engagement? Does Brady go to work at Tort? I, I'm, I'm tossing stuff out there. I want you to decide. Come up with anything you can imagine on what might happen next. And especially thinking about that tone of kind of closure. At the end of every mystery, the gift is it all kind of gets packaged up with a sweet little bow. All is made right in the world again. That's why we like to read mysteries, right? Because at the beginning, something tragic and horrible happens that throws off the balance, and then everybody rallies together to suss out who all the suspects are. And at the end, we name our killer. We understand the killer's motive. Poor Hank in this case. The kid, he's just trying to avenge his mother's death. And then at the very end, of course, we have some sense of closure. So I want you, with your amazing plotting minds, to be thinking over the next few days of what else needs to happen to finish our story. You have until Sunday evening to share those ideas 
And then I will once again compile some options to put out for one last vote. How does that sound? Okay. Uh, let's look at a couple questions before I move on. Susan uh, is asking, the big question is who really owns the Mary Windsor? That is a good question. So that might be something to put out. It is hard, Genevieve. <laughs> it's a lot to wrap up. We've had like, you know, 12 parts, chapters, as well as I think like 60 pages of content um, thus far that we have shared together. So we got a lot of wrapping up to do in, you know, five or six pages next week. But I have had so much fun with this project. As I mentioned before, I'm definitely gonna share it. It'll probably get shared, I'm thinking sometime in July because we're gonna be moving on after we wrap up the pages to um, a book launch, which is super exciting. Super excited about that. Okay, um, one other thing that I want you to think about for next week, because next Friday's live is gonna be the culmination of all of our joint work together. I want you to join me for next week's live with something brunchish. Get a mimosa, an iced tea, your favorite fizzy drink or a latte, whatever. Have some sort of treat on hand and we will toast to our success of collaborating a project together and we'll share brunch while we read the last part of a brunch with death. That only seems fitting, don't you think? We need to celebrate together, even if it's online like this. Um, okay, other questions, let's see. Carlos bought the Mary Windsor when he bought the vineyard. Ooh, Marie, I like the way you're thinking. That could be a very interesting uh, possibility there for sure. All right, so that's your assignment. I want you to start thinking about that. I want you to start thinking about something delicious to share with me next week as we read the last part of the pages together. And then before I get to other questions, so think about any other questions you have and, and start commenting now for those. I'll go back to classes too. I want to just share a little bit about what's coming up for the release of Nothing But Trouble. I can't believe it, we're just a few weeks away. I had my call with my publishing team yesterday and books are about to be in warehouses everywhere soon. So I'm super excited for that. I have all kinds of fun things planned, which I know I've talked a little bit about, but I want you to watch my social media pages. Some of them, some of the events that I'm doing here on Facebook Live and YouTube and Instagram are already up, but I'll be sharing more in the next few days and weeks. Please come join me if you're wanting personalized signed copies of books, we're gonna be able to make that happen. So through some of the bookstore partnerships I'm doing, I will be able to actually sign and personalize copies and then they will get sent or delivered to your front doors. I have tons of giveaways and bonuses and book plates, stickers, you name it. So much fun stuff to share. This book comes out in just a few weeks and I did a video earlier this week about why this book in particular is so meaningful to me because I think it really, going back to that idea of closure, like we're preparing for Brunch with Death, this book really gives Jules some insight and closure for some of her past losses and really is gonna set the stage, as Lance would say, for the next iteration of The Bake Shop as The Bake Shop begins to grow and change and Jules is growing changing. So I'm excited to share this one with you. And I'm sad, of course, as I mentioned, that I'm not gonna be physically with you all, but I've tried to come up with a ton of fun, creative things to be able to share like this. So I'm super excited and I can't wait to do that with you. Okay, let's get to a few questions while we have some time. Hi, Regina. Let's see, that was an amazing, experience, Trisha says, have you ever thought about teaching a master? Okay, so classes came up early on, so let's chat about that a little bit. I have been working on a project that feels more daunting than any book that I've ever written, and I think I'm on to like book 26 or 27 at this point in time between all of my collective series. For many years now, you all have been asking, and especially when I go do live talks and events, Readers have asked me to do some sort of class or workshop. 
It is happening. It's actually happening. So I am working and almost done with an entire course that is going to teach you how to write a mystery from the initial concept or beginning seed of an idea all the way through to the publishing piece of that mystery, which I know that piece alone is terrifying for some people. So not only am I going to teach you everything that I have learned thus far over the course of my writing career about plotting and character development and setting, embedding red herrings, a lot of stuff that we've done here that we've touched on a little bit, we're going to do a deep, deep dive into. And then part of the course is also going to include things about how you find agents and write query letters and book proposals. And hopefully at the end of the course, you're going to be armed with all of the tools. I know you will be armed with all you need to not only reverse mystery and build a mystery series, but also land a publishing contract. I'm excited to share this with you. It's going to be an online format. I've shot them all in videos and they will be shared in a platform where you can download the videos. They will also include tons of exercises and projects for you to do on your own. So I've designed the course to follow my own writing process. So it's going to take you through step by step what I do. And then as part of that, after we roll that series of classes out is that I will be doing some mentorships too, which is another thing that I've been asked about a lot. And I haven't always had the time because I usually am traveling a lot more for books. So it's a bit of, you know, a blessing and a curse not to be able to come out um, with COVID right now on tour, but it's freeing me up a little bit to do some of this stuff, which I'm excited about. And I am a firm believer a firm believer that everyone has a story to tell. So if you're accelerating or if you're thinking about writing a mystery before, stay tuned because it's gonna be a lot more time. Okay, other questions. Reba's asking about the will. How did it end up in the bank security box? Right? All of the kinds of questions that I want you to be thinking about and sharing potential ideas for, I think for this particular set of questions that I'm gonna put back out, for votes, there are probably going to be a few because we're going to want to try to tie up any lingering loose ends that we can. Okay. How about to end everything they have a brunch? Yes. I love the idea of them having brunch, Genevieve, because um, that's why I think we should be having brunch together ourselves. Okay. Hi, Jamie. Oh, thanks for pre-ordering. That's so excited. Oh, I'm super excited that you're reading the Pacific Northwest Mysteries too. So that is my very first mystery series that I wrote under the name Kate Dyer Seeley. And it features young bumbling protagonist who loves all things pink. She claims to be an adventure lover in order to land a job writing for um, an adventure magazine when in reality she has not an athletic bone in her body and is terrified of heights. And she gets, you know, sent up to the top of cliffs and ski lifts. And um, I had so much fun writing that series. At some point in time, I'll have to do a whole live just about that because I tapped into a lot of my experiences in my early one of that particular series. Um, somebody in here that do this again, and that is definitely going to happen. We talked about that last time. I think what we're going to kick off in July is a collaboration for Sloan because that'll be fun timing with the next Sloan books coming out at the end of September and early October. So we'll have um, a little side trip to Leavenworth, Washington. I will probably launch that sometime, I'm thinking mid-July, mid to late July. Stay tuned, I'll, I'll kind of figure out the details soon. The other piece of that is, I mentioned this last week too, but for anybody who missed it, we're gonna move this to a private Facebook group for anyone who wants to do another story collaboration, just because I know that the way the social media algorithms work is that you don't always see the content, unfortunately. And so the good thing about a private Facebook group is that you, anyone who's part of that will automatically be notified whenever we're sharing questions or new pages or that kind of thing. Okay. Or even Mrs. Meg. <laughs> Let's go live on her and feature pink. Yes. Cherry whipped cream. I'm down. I'm totally down with that. I love Meg too. In fact, I, again, it's just, it's so fascinating to think about I think with any experience, obviously there's been so much turmoil around the pandemic and my crazy COVID dreams and just kind of our reduction of lifestyle and staying very 
um, hyper local and at home. And then on the plus side, from my writing lens, I do have extra time that I wasn't anticipating. So Meg has, I wrapped that series up with book five, I think three or four years. There's a subplot that runs through that same kind of wraps up, but it's left slightly open-ended at the end of book five. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but lately, like the last, I don't know, three or four months, I've had this little tapping in my brain where Meg's like, hey, hey, I'm here. What do you think? You want to bring me back? This collaboration together has made me think like, oh, maybe she could come back in like a short little novella form in a little while. Yeah. Oh, Diana says, can Meg appear in a future Bake Shop mystery? <laughs> that would be awesome. Too. Jules would definitely, you know, want to mother her. And um, not that Jules is all that much older than her, but Jules would definitely want to um, give Meg some advice. But yeah, I've been thinking Meg could come back in some kind of fun form. Jeanette says, do you have a tentative time class? Yeah, so despite the fact that I have um, more time right now, hold on one sec, I got to take a sip. Um, despite the fact that I have more time, it is a project, uh, such a daunting project because so much of what I've learned over the years is in my brain. So just getting it on paper took so much. I will also tell you that in the process of putting this course together, I think I cried more than I've ever cried in my entire life. I'd be like, I can't do this. I can't. Okay. You got this. Um, which was kind of refreshing. And it was a good reminder of going back to writing my first book, Meg, and um, all the angst that went into that. So I really appreciate that kind of full circle um, process because it was it was a nice reminder of like, oh, when you're writing your first book, it is so overwhelming and daunting. And at times you just want to cry or rip the manuscript to shreds or give up. Um, so my very long answer to that is I'm hoping, don't quote me on this, but I'm hoping that they will be ready to launch or the course will be ready to launch shortly after the release of Nothing But Trouble. My focus for the next few weeks will be launching that book out into the world and getting it in all of your hands. Um, but then I'm going to shift gears to some classes and I have plans for a few other series after I launch this first course. So I'm super excited for anyone who wants to um, write because you should. We all need more stories in the world. Okay, uh, Genevieve is asking, how do we sign up for the classes? I will be sharing tons of information about them as up and live. They're going to be run through a platform called, um, so I'll be sharing that once they're up, but they're not live yet. So I don't want to get you too excited, but um, hopefully in the next, I don't know, month or so, they should be ready to go. Meg loves beer so she could visit Sloan. You know, it's funny because Meg loves coffee and beer. And so I think in some ways, because that was my first book, then she became, she like spun off to become Jules and uh, Sloan together. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, Arzani said I would love it if Meg would come back. Yeah, I think it might be time. You know, I always as a, try to follow where my creative energy is pulling me. And with Meg, I had a really clear story arc for five books for her because in book one, we learned that her father has died. And so, you know, her arc was trying to figure that out. There's a mystery for each five books that is independent of that. But then, you know, that's her kind of her bigger arc. And once that ended, I was already writing Jules and Sloan was just getting started. So my interest and energy, I guess, Felt like, oh, there's some closure there. I'll set that aside. But um, it's interesting because it's been a few years now and I'm finding myself missing her a little bit. So yeah, no, I think it, I think it could be tough. Okay, I think that does it for this week's Friday Live. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have something fun planned for the weekend. Don't forget your assignment. Start thinking about that what happens next question, what loose ends are left that you might want to tie up, what sort of um, progress do we want to set for any of the rest of the cast who participated in this particular spinoff. And then don't forget to join me next Friday, 10 o'clock, live here, 10 o'clock Pacific time um, and bring something brunchish, a drink, a treat, if you want. And we will have a last final brunch with death together as we celebrate the fact that we have spent 
three months writing a book together. That is so amazing. Um, and I will have details soon too about how you're going to be able to download it. And I know someone had asked last week if at some point in time I could read the whole thing again. So I will probably do that too. We'll have a whole culmination at some point. All right. Have a great weekend and happy plotting. You have work to do.